the odd and even company, Moscow. One and a half leftist hours. Yelizaveta Bam by Daniel Harms. Kuplianov and Natasha by Alexander Vedensky. Directed by Alexander Ponomaryov. Recorded in Zurich, Switzerland. The English text that follows is rendering rather than translation.
and absurdist poem by Daniel Harms, an evening song. Вас чеков. Смотрит в окно на улицу. Looking out at the street. Смотрю в окно и вижу снег. I'm looking out and I can see snow. Картина зимняя давно душа. It's a familiar picture of winter. Какой-то глупый человек. Some foolish man. Is in the entrance of the house, across from here. He is smoking a pipe, a bundle of books under his arm. Now he is crossing the street swiftly. I lost sight of him. and knock at the door. Now I can hear the knock on the door. Who is there? The voice. Open, please. The telegram. I can, I can feel it's a lie. There's no telegram. I feel some apprehension. Shall I open the door, or shall I not? The voice. Open, please. Why are you taking your time? Wait a minute. Please put the message under the door. The lock is broken. Goodbye. The voice. You have to put your signature in the book. Please open the door. You have nothing to be afraid of. Ostrikov opens the door slightly. Come in. Where are you? What's that? Where has he gone? He couldn't have got very far away. There's nowhere to hide. There's no one in the street. Goodness. There are no footprints in the snow either. Who is knocking? Who is talking to me? He is shutting the door.
door might open any minute and they will come in. They are sure to come in and wipe me off the face of the earth. What have I done? What have I done? If only I had known. Shall I run away? But where to? This door leads to the staircase, and I'm sure to run into them and the staircase. Out of the window? No, that's too high. I cannot jump off here. What shall I do? Footsteps. Must be them. I lock the door and I won't open. Let them knock and knock at the door. Then a horrifying voice behind the door. Elisaveta Baum. I open the door. Elisaveta Baum. I open the door. Well, sir, she's not opening. She will. Elisaveta Baum. I open the door. Elisaveta Baum dashes onto the bed and stops up her ears. Elisaveta Baum, I'm ordering you to open the door this minute. Tell her that otherwise we'll break in the door. We'll break in the door if you don't open this minute. Suppose she's not there. She is here. Where else could she be? There's only one door here. Elisaveta Baum, I'm telling you for the last time. Open the door. Break in. Elisaveta Baum is raising her head with an alliterative sound. They're trying to break in the door. Elisaveta Baum is rushing into the middle of the stage and listening. Do you happen to have a knife? A blow. Elisaveta Baum is listening, putting forward her shoulder. No, try it with your shoulder. It won't give. Let me try again. The door makes crackling sounds, but it won't give. I won't open the door until you tell me what you're going to do to me. You know yourself what you're facing. No, I don't. Are you going to kill me? You are to be punished. You won't get away. Perhaps you'll tell me what's my guilt. You know it yourself. No, I don't. Uh, allow me not to believe you. You are a criminal. And if you kill me, do you think you'll have a clear conscience? We'll do it according to our idea of conscience. Then you have no conscience at all. How come I have no conscience? Peter Nikolaevich, she's saying I have no conscience. You have no conscience at all. You're just a swindler. Who is a swindler? Me? Am I a swindler? Wait a minute, Ivan Ivanovich. Elizabeth Ivan. I'm ordering you. No, no. Pyotr Nikolaevich, am I a swindler? No, just a minute, Pyotr Nikolaevich. Tell me, am I a swindler? Uh, let me alone. So, I am a swindler, according to you. Yes, yes. That's how it is. So I am a swindler. Get off, idiot. We entrusted you with such a responsible mission. Just a word drives you up the wall. Who are you after that? Just an idiot. And you are a humbug. Get off. Ivan Ivanovich is a swindler. I won't forgive you after that. I'll throw you down the stairs. You just try. I will, I will. You won't dare. I won't dare? You won't. Elizaveta Baum.
You don't dare speak like that. Why? Because you have been deprived of the right to speak. You have committed an atrocious crime. You are a criminal. Why? Why what? Why am I a criminal? Because you are deprived of the right to speak. You are deprived of the right to speak. I am not. You can check it by the clock. will pick up a side. Will you show us? Will you show us, please? You just look. I suggest you look the other way. One, two, three. Once again, please. Here you are. How do you do that? That's very simple. Will you show us, Ivan Ivanovich? With pleasure. Voila. How sweet, how sweet. Mama, come over here. Magicians have come. My mama is coming. Meet Peter Nikolaevich and Ivan Ivanovich. Will you show us something? With pleasure. Voila. Right now, right now, there's no support here. Perhaps a towel? What for? You have very nice looks. Really? Why? Because you are a forget-me-not. I am a forget-me-not. Really. And you are a tulip. What? Tulip. Very nice. Let me pick you up. Elisaveta, cut it out. I'll stop in a minute, Daddy. Get down on all fours. If you will allow me, Elizabeth Tarakanovna, I'd better go home. My wife is waiting for me at home. She has many children, Elizabeth Tarakanovna. I'm sorry I'm such a nuisance. Don't forget me. That's just the kind of man I am. Everybody's showing me off. What for? Have I stolen anything? No. Elizabeth Eduardovna, I'm an honest man. I have a wife at home. She has many children. They're very nice children. Every one of them is holding a matchbox in his teeth. Forgive me, Elizabeth Mikhailovna. I'd better go home. A popular sentimental romance of the period. A seagull was killed by a hunter in the same way my love was killed. There is no hope any longer. Yeah. 
глядя на жертву, он скрылся в горах. Там девушка чудная чайка, над озером тихим спокойно жила, но в душу пошел к ней. Here we are. Thank God. Aren't you coming for a walk, Mama? Do you feel like it? Yes, very much. No, I won't. Let's go, shall we? Okay, let's go. Where, where, where is Elizabeth Baum? Here she is. There, there, here, here. Where are we, Ivan Ivanovich? Kotor Nikolaevich, we are locked in. What, what an outrage. Don't talk like this to me. Where is Elizabeth Baum? Why do you need her to kill? Hmm, Elizabeth Obam is on the bench over there. Let's run as fast as we can. Just gibberish. Is that me you're looking for? You? Vanka. Vanka. Here she is. Where? Where? Right here. Pull her out. She won't. Comrade, will you help me? Next time I'll have more experience. I've noticed everything now. I have nothing. I just want a carpet. Ask that guy over there. What are you doing? I'm digging out roots. Get in, comrades. Uh, put your hands on the stone. Never mind, he can't do that.
You might as well sit down. Why are you standing? Thank you. Let's sit down. Silence. They're eating soup. Why isn't my husband coming home? Where might she be? He'll come. Catch me. Where, where is my house? Here, all of this line. You are it. Ivan Ivanovich, run over here. I have no legs. You get down on all fours. About whom it was written. Who is it? I'm wearing trousers. Copernicus was a great scientist. I have hair on my head. I'm all on the floor. When you buy a bird, look carefully if it has teeth. If it has teeth, it is not a bird. <coughs> Listen carefully to what I have to say. I want to prove to you that any disaster comes unexpectedly. When I was quite a young man, I used to live in a small cottage with a squeaking door. I lived alone in that cottage. Apart from me, there were only mice and cockroaches. There are cockroaches everywhere. When night came, I locked the door and put out the lamp. I slept and was afraid of nothing. 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 I had nothing to be afraid of. And we, in fact, burglars might have come and searched the whole house. What could they have found? Nothing. Who else might have got into my house at night? There was nobody else, right? Nobody else, right? Right? But once I wake up, and I see that the door is open, and there is some woman in the doorway. I'm looking right into her face. She's standing. It was light enough. Morning might have been approaching, and anyway, I could see her face very well. This is who she was. Then she looked like me. 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 What are you saying? I'm saying it to be. Then I think it was too late. She's listening to me. I asked her why she had done that. She said that they had been fighting a duel. They were fighting honestly, but, but she was not to blame that she had killed him. Think. Why did you kill Peter Nikolaevich? Hooray! I didn't kill anybody. Just go and stab a man to death. What a treachery. Hooray! You've done this, but why?
great-grandmother rejoicing, lost for good brown horse and a soldier on its head. My shoulders are like rising sun. My feet are like cucumbers. I was saying nothing, nothing, nothing. A nursery rhyme about a pussycat. Jump onto the stove. Two gates, a shirt, a rope. Two carpenters have come and are asking what the matter is. Cutlets, Varvara Semyonovna. A tight rope dancer. I'm all dazzling. We don't know the volume of this room. We'll get even somehow. The well-being of the Pennsylvanian Shepherd and Shepherd and Shepherdies. Ivan Ivan, a box from Wood. Will you show it? Have a look. I found a mushroom. Let's go to the lake. I met Kolka yesterday. Oh, really? Yes, I met him. Kolka is walking and carrying apples. I'm asking, have you bought them? Yes, he says, I have. Then he just walked on. Oh, really? And I asked him, have you bought the apples or stolen them? And he says, why stolen? I've bought them and just walked on. Where did he walk to? I don't know. He just said, I bought the apples, I didn't steal them. And just walked on. With this kind of greeting, which was not really nice, the sister brought him to the more open place where golden chairs and tables were put together in a heap and about 15 young beauties were chattering merrily to each other. All these girls needed a hot iron badly. And everyone has a strange and peculiar manner of turning round your eyes without stopping to chat for a minute. Friends, we have all gathered here. Hooray! Hooray! I want to tell you that since I was born, 38 years has passed. Hooray! Comrades, I have a home. I have a wife at home. She has many children. I've counted them. Ten pieces. Daria, Maria, Fyodor, Pelageya, Nina, Alexander and four others. Are they all boys? <coughs> Broke away and started running. Broke away and started running. To eat bread, to eat soup, to eat meat, to eat flour. Another urban folklore song of the period. Редактор
Why is everything so sad in the scenery around? Moon was shining, wind was blowing. The forest was whispering something. We're sitting together and listening to the nightingale's song. And I was weeping bitterly. Don't cry, my darling, for I love you too. Sometimes I suffer so much without you, but I can't be yours. My father is a priest, and you know that. And you're a communist. He won't allow me to love you. He's a monarchist. Inveterate and nasty. Here is my last word, are you going to be mine or not? I won't be yours, that's my last answer. I drew my black pistol from my pocket and the tragedy was over. A hurricane went through my heart. So I regained consciousness in an infirmary. I meant to ask my doctor how I had got here, and then I see my pistol in front of me. You judge to what you like to me. You can hold me responsible, but first put the priest in chains, and then charge me. I have committed a crime. Bury me next to the beauty who I loved so dearly. To eat bits, to eat mutton, to eat cutlets. Oh, my legs are tired. Oh, my feet are tired. Oh, my hands are tired. Oh, my scissors are tired. Oh, the springs are tired. The door to the balcony is open. I'd like to jump up to the fourth floor. I've broken away and started running. My right hand and my nose are just the same things as my left hand and my ear. Goodbye, goodbye. Above there is a pine tree and it's dark everywhere. And on the pine tree there is a bed and there is my husband in bed. Goodbye, goodbye. Once we came to an endless house, and a young old man is looking out of the window. You are broken. 
and the chair is broke. Stand Berlino, I get Pellerino. Stand up by Berlin, put on Eight minutes go pass without no without you noticing. Help me, help me. There is lettuce and water above me. Tell me, Pyotr Nikolaevich, have you been up there on that hill? I've just come back from there. It's beautiful. The flowers are growing, the trees are rustling. There is a small cottage, a wooden house. And in this cottage there is a light glowing and night nets and mosquitoes are knocking at the window sometimes and night bird will flutter on the roof. A dog is waving air with its chain and is barking into the emptiness in front of it and in reply the invisible dragonflies are muttering in contagion in a variety of tones. And in that house, which is wooden, which is called a cottage, where there is a light staring. Who lives there? Nobody lives there. Nobody opens the door. Only mice are grinding, grinding grains and making flour. And only the lamp is giving off a rosemary light. And like a hermit, a cock cockroach is sitting on his stove all day long. And who lights the lamp? Nobody does. It burns by itself. This cannot be. Empty stupid words. There is endless movement. Breathing of light elements. The rotation of the earth. The change of days and nights. The combinations of wild nature. The angry strength of beasts. And conquering, conquering by man. The laws of light and wave. Now I've understood. I've understood. I thank you and sit down and keep wondering as usual. What time is it? Would you please tell me? It's four. Oh, high time. We have lunch. Ivan Ivanovich, let's go. But remember that tomorrow night Elizaveta Baum will die. Which Elizaveta Baum? Which is my daughter? Who you want to kill next night and hang on the pine tree? Who is slender? For beasts everywhere around to know. But I, I order you with the power of my hand to forget Elizaveta Baum in defiance of all the laws. You just try to forbid you. I'll trample you down in a minute. Then I'll cut your joints with the whips and throw you out to the wind like a rooster. He knows everything around. He's my lord and he's my friend. With, my, with just one movement of the, of the wing, he moves the seas. With just one movement of the axe, he cuts the forest and the mountains. He can't be caught anywhere. Let's have a fight, magician. You with the word, I with the hand. A minute will pass, an hour will pass, then another hour. 
you'll die, so will I. Everything will be quiet over there. But let my daughter, Elisabetta Baum, rejoice. Combat of two nights, text by Immanuel Christ Eiteri, music by Delio Park, the shepherd of the Netherlands, movement by an unknown traveler. The beginning will be announced by the bell. The beginning will be announced by the chimes of the bell. Gibberish. Let a winged parrot fly as far as the sun. Let a golden day die. Let the clatter of hooves come through the forests. And the knight sitting at the table will rise a chalice. Shout over it. I'm raising this chalice to my lips and I'm drinking to the one who is best of all, Elisaveta Bam. Whose hands are white and fresh, which caressed my waistcoat. Elisaveta Baum, may you live 100,000 years. Well, off we go. Follow carefully the movement of the swords. The salt from the left. I cut here, I cut there. Get off everybody. A grove is rustling everywhere. Gardens are growing. You'd better follow the movement of iron sentence and the concentration of deadly forces. Glory to iron, it strengthens the pavement and tortures an enemy to death. Glory to iron, glory to battle. It excites the robber, it makes, it makes a youth out of a baby. Tortures an enemy to death. Glory to battle. Glory to feathers. Oh, glory to feathers. Lying under a pine tree, 
and water is running from under him towards the dead enemy. I fell down on the ground, struck by the spear. Fare well, Elizabeth Baum. Go to my cottage, cottage on the hill and fall down there. <coughs> and deaf mice will run about you and your hands. And, and then will the hermit of a cockroach. Can you hear the chimes of the bell on the roof? Beam and bam. Forgive me, Elizaveta Bam. The battle of the two knights is over. Oh, Daddy, you are here. I am very glad. I've just been to the cooperative shop. I've been buying, buying some candies for tea. Oh, how tired I am. What have you been doing? I've been cutting wood and I'm terribly tired. Ivan Ivanovich, go to, uh, to the half a beer bar and bring us a bottle of beer and some peas. Oh, yes. Some peas and half a bottle of beer. Not half a bottle, a bottle of beer, and not to the beer bar. But will you go to the peas, please? All right, just a minute. I'll put away my fur coat into the half a beer bar and put on uh, half peas on my head. Oh, please don't hurry up, for my daddy is tired of cutting wood. All oh, these women, they have little understanding. There's emptiness in place of understanding with them. Comrades, this bitch did my son in. Which one, which one? This one, with the lips like that. Mama, Mama, what are you saying? It's because of you that his life ended in a draw. But tell me, who are you talking about? She's gone. They will come here now. What have I done? They are sure to come to catch me and wipe me off the face of the earth. I have to run away. But where to? This, this door leads to the staircase. And there, I'm sure to run into them. Out of the window? No, that's too high. I cannot jump from here. But what shall I do? Footsteps. Must be them. I lock the door. And I won't open. Let them knock all they want. She's shutting the door. She's locking the door. And knock at the door, then voices. Elizaveta Baum. In the name of law, I order you to open the door. Silence. I order you to open the door. Silence. Let's break in the door. Elizaveta Bam, open the door. We'll break in the door ourselves. 
What do you want to do to me? You are to be severely punished. What for? Why won't you tell me what I've done? You are charged with the murder of Pyotr Nikolaevich Krupernak, and you are to answer for that. But I didn't kill anybody. The court will take a decision on that. I'm in your hands. Elizabeth Baum is opening the door. In the name of law, you are under arrest. Follow us. Tie me up, pull me by the hair, put me through the trough. I didn't kill anybody. I cannot kill anybody. Elizaveta Bam, quiet, look straight ahead and in the house which is on the hill there is already light, the mouse are moving their whiskers and Tarak and the cockroach in a shirt with a red collar and with an axe is sitting on the stove. Elizaveta Bam, put out your hands, put out your gaze, follow me. Keeping the balance of the joints and the triumph of the limbs. Follow me. Kupriyanov and Natasha by Alexander Vidyansky. Priyanov. Kupriyanov and his dear woman Natasha, having seen off those swinish guests, are going to bed. Kupriyanov taking off his important necktie, said, the candle is burning, frightening darkness. It has silver bones. Natasha, why are you strolling around in a flutter? The guests must have long left. I have even forgotten who they were. Marusia, Sonia. Let's go to bed, my dear. I'd like to dig you and look for all kinds of things in you. For they say you are made not in the same way I am. Natasha, taking off her cardigan. Priyanov, this candle is no good. It wouldn't even light a lamb, I'm afraid. 
and here there are two of us. I'm afraid I'll start wailing soon, from misery, from thoughts, from feelings, from fear. I'm afraid of you, my sovereign of the shirt, hiding me in yourself. I'm like a fly inside you. Kupriyanov taking off his jacket. Very soon, Natasha, we'll indulge in funny pleasures. You with me, and I with you, will be involved in childbirth. And we'll be like pike perches. Natasha. Natasha. Taking off her skirt. Oh dear. I'm now skirtless. What shall I do in my colored panties? Meanwhile, quite silver goblets were sitting on the chairs. The wine was pitch black like a monk, and a half-dead worm was staring. I'm going on. I feel that I have even become ashamed. I'm burying myself like the sky. So far you can see nothing, but soon the star will start shining. Everything is so rotten. I'll now appear before you, almost naked, like the tide. I remember that earlier, at moments like this, I used to be in sacred rapture. I saw the spring of a woman, green or blue, but it was red. I used to go crazy. I used to laugh and stroke her satiny behind. I felt very good, and I thought that the woman was a pipe. She is almost a human being, an inaccessible duck. Well, hurry up now. While shedding my feathers, I think that your nose and eyes are now filled with me. Already you are eating my earthly look. You are looking forward to the pleasure of standing on me for two hours like a tower. You can already see my hair through my shirt. You can feel the throbbing of my wave. But somehow my mind is going numb. I'm half sleepy like boredom. I suppose I'll take them off too, not to look like a corpse, to bring our skins closer together. However, let's look at our faces in the mirror. I'm rather moustached, slightly red with passion. My eyes glisten. I'm troubling, I'm trembling. while you are beautiful and light. And your breasts are like two pots. Perhaps we are devils. Look, here I am all naked. See what came of it. This is all the continuation of the face. As if I were in the bath. On 
the sides, there are my brown shoulders like candles. A little, a little below them are two nourishing breasts. The nipples on them are shining up front. Under them is a desert of the stomach. And the entrance into me. Fluffy and not long. And two considerable legs. Nothing could be seen between them. Perhaps you'd like to see the land landscape of my back, which is dark due to its length. Here we have two nice shoulder blades, soldiers and tents, as it were. And next is a wonderful seat. Its heavenly vision should impress you. And the half-dead worm was staring. Nothing was singing around them when she was showing her tricky body to him. How boring everything around us is, and how monotonously sickening. Look, like a naked palm standing here gorgeously, and my fourth arm is raised to the sky powerfully. I wish somebody would come and see us, for there is nobody here but us and the Savior and the icon. I wonder how long we have been undressing. I suppose about half an hour. Huh? What do you think? In the meantime, they embraced each other and walked up to the bed slowly. You are ultimately dear to me, Natasha, Kupriyanov says to her. She lies down and raises her legs, and the, the dumb candle is burning. Well, Kupriyanov, I've lain down, arranged for, for darkness to come. The last ring of the world which hasn't yet come apart, is you on me. And the black apartment above them was smiling momentarily. Come on, lie down, Kupriyanov. We'll die soon. No, I don't want to. Exit. Natasha, it's terrible. I've remained alone. The love of stones hasn't come to pass. I'm lying alone, lying in sadness, and moving my arm around me in the vicinity. She is crying. Kupriyanov, sitting on the chair, indulges in lonely enjoyment. I'm giving myself a pleasure. There. It's all over now. Get dressed. The half-dead worm is dozing. Natasha, putting on a shirt. I've taken you off, because there's not enough of the world, because there's no world at all, because it is higher than me. Here I am, a lonely fool with my mad figure. Natasha, look, it's getting light. Go away. I hate to look at you. I'm tickling myself, which brings me enormous happiness. I am my own source. I love somebody else. I'm putting on my sleep. From the naked state, I will change into the flames of clothes. Kupriyanov, putting on his undershorts. There is no more hope for me. It seems to me that I'm getting smaller and more lifeless and more angry. From the eyes of such hot women, flames are running down the yellow of my body. I'm not myself. The half-dead worm is yawning. Natasha, putting on her skirt. What a disgrace. What a shamelessness. I have trusted myself to the lost scoundrel. This is a bore of mankind. And people like him will also be immortal. It was night. There was nature. 
the half-dead worm is yawning. O natural sciences, O logic, O mathematics, O arts, am I to blame that I believed in the strength of the lost feeling, how dark everything is becoming, the world is ultimately choking, it's nauseated by me, I am nauseated by it. Dignity has been covered by the lost thunderclouds. I didn't believe in the number of stars. I believed in one star. It turned out I'm a lonely rider. And we were not like pike perches. Look, idiot, look at the endings of my breasts. They're disappearing. They're going away. They're swimming off. Touch them, fool. A long sleep will come to them soon. I'm turning into a lodge. I'm swelling. I've been saying that a woman is almost a human being. She is a tree. What shall I do now? I'll light a cigarette. I'll sit here. I'll think it over. It is more and more often now that it seems to me that time still moves, that it still breathes. Can it be that time is stronger than death? Perhaps we're devils. Fare thee well, my dear Lodge, Natasha. The sun is rising, powerful as light. I understand nothing anymore. He is becoming smaller and smaller and is disappearing. Nature is indulging in lonely enjoyment. <laughs>